Hey there, it's Brian here. This time I'll show you the Dupe HV, a powerful polyphonic software synthesizer. In this video, I'll take you through all of its new features, as well as give you the overview of the whole instrument. Let's check it out. Dupe 8V is a member of V Collection's Analog Polyphonic Software Brigade, shining with its symphony of voices, carefully modeled engine, carefully crafted sounds, and beautiful design. The updated version adds a completely new audio engine, modernized 3D interface with reshuffled advanced panel, a new feature set, as well as upgraded browsing function, making it a fully complete instrument. Let's start with some of its most recognizable sounds and continue with all the new and great features that come with it. First off, we will check out the composition of the front panel and then dive deeper into the extra settings. The Dupe 8V has a totally new sound engine, making it even more realistic. It also adds the new front and advanced panel design, which makes its interface and modules more visible, logical, and easy to understand. The new functions also include voice calibration and enhanced modulations, sequencer, keyboard, and effects section. We'll cover in detail a bit later. The front panel sound architecture starts with two voltage-controlled oscillators. We'll begin with VCO1. Thanks to its set of waveform shapes, the range of tones that it can produce is pretty diverse. Let's check them out now. The first is the triangle. Then we have the sawtooth. Pulse. and a square wave. As you can hear, a simple melody that uses nothing but the pure waveforms already sounds very engaging. Then there's a range control which changes the frequency of the oscillator in octaves, going from 16 up until 2. The second oscillator is quite similar, having the same sawtooth and pulse waveform shapes, yet it has its own distinctive features, such as the sine waveform or the noise generator. Let's listen to those by switching to the VCO2 with a source mix control. The first one is the sine waveform and it can go really low. As well as sound subtle and bell-like. Then the last one is noise. All of these waveforms form a great starting point to create various timbres and textures, which is a big plus. Then it also differs in the way that its frequency control is handled. Here you can use either the fine tune parameter or range one. The former changes the pitch in cents, while the latter in semitones, like this. Additionally, we can change VCO2's behavior from audio rate frequency to low frequency mode. This lets you use VCO2 as a low frequency oscillator. This can be done by increasing the cross modulation fader. This simply means that VCO1 will now follow the frequency of VCO2. When the latter is fed into the first oscillator, its low mode cycles will cause the modulation. We can also play around with its range control to hear how it will impact the signal, as well as change the VCO2 waveform shapes. More than that, with two oscillators in the mix, the cross-modulation feature allows for some really nasty tones and textures. You can also tame it a bit, syncing the frequencies of both oscillators to each other, This will result in a slightly less aggressive feel, yet still keeping the artifacts and character of the cross-modulation, keeping it in tune. Those features, along with the chorus, detune both of and offset their frequencies, makes those two VCOs a perfect match. With these, you can achieve very diverse tones, timbres, and textures. 
The VCO modulator section is where the LFO and envelope 1 amount controls are situated. Here you can apply those modules to both oscillators as well as the pulse width modulation shaper which is affecting the pulse waveforms in both oscillators. The switch next to the faders allows you to choose which oscillator you want to affect. You can also affect them both. To get a glimpse of how the modulators can affect the oscillators, we can create the pitch envelope. In this combination, the envelope 1 fader will define how much of the first envelope is affecting the oscillator's frequency. With the right settings, it can be a really useful sound design tool. A technique on this topic is the inversion of the envelope. Moving on, the increase of the LFO fader with the current LFO settings produces a nice, slow, lazy frequency effect, imitating an unstable analog tuning. We can also manipulate the modulated signal by changing the LFO setting. Here we can hear how the change of the waveform to square can impact the frequency. The LFO also includes a delay time fader which introduces a fade in on the LFO modulation after pressing a key, allowing you to create interesting evolving movements. On top of that, you can define if the LFO phase is re-triggered every time you play a key or cycles freely, independently of your input. The last thing to explore in this section is the pulse width modulation. Here you can define if it's controlled manually by you while playing. Or by the modulators, LFO. and the first envelope. Entering the filter section, the first one to discover is the high pass filter. You can spontaneously use it to cut unwanted low frequencies before the signal goes into the next voltage control filter. A common use would be to cut out anything below 150 to 200 Hertz to make your chords lighter. It can also be used to give more precision to the bass sounds by cleaning up the frequencies under 30 to 40 Hz. Then the signal is fed into the voltage controlled filter. This is a low pass filter with two slopes, minus 12 and minus 24 dB per octave. Let's check out how these two will sound. Minus 12 dB. and now minus 24 dB. The VCF can be easily modulated by several modulators directly from the main panel. The VCF envelope modulation defines how much envelope modulation is applied to the VCF cutoff. Its selector defines whether the modulation is generated by envelope 1 or envelope 2. Note that the first envelope can be inverted, which usually produces a choked effect on the VCF when the keys are held, and then an opening effect when the keys are released, like this. The VCF section also has a dedicated LFO amount fader which will define how much of the LFO modulation is applied to the filter. <music> Lastly, you can apply the keyboard tracking so the higher notes will be brighter than the lower ones. The VCA section is pretty straightforward. 
you can define how much the second envelope will control it and how much of the LFO modulation is applied to the overall volume of the instrument. We already showed some interesting applications of the envelopes, so let's just do a quick recap. These two modulators are both four-stage ADSR envelopes. They can be applied to control various modes, such as VCOs, VCF and VCA. The first envelope can invert its polarity, allowing for more unusual sounds, while both of them provide the possibility of activating the keyboard tracking. On top of that, they can also be modulated or merged together with some advanced modulation systems that we cover in the advanced panel. The Dupe 8V arpeggiator is really hands-on and easy to use. Placed below the envelopes, it provides a few simple controls, yet guaranteeing many versatile rhythms. The on-off switch allows you to activate or deactivate it. Now we can explore various arpeggio options. Let's change the octave range to 2. We can also play around with the playback direction. Let's change it from up to order. This will play back the notes in the same order as you have played them on the keyboard. Finally, we can also impact the speed of it and define if it will be clocked to the master tempo or free running. For further investigation, play around with the various settings. Moving on, the newly added dispersion feature is based on the analog behavior and characteristic of the iconic hardware instruments. Each unit has its own quirks and behaves slightly differently depending on its condition and calibration. To recreate this phenomenon, we introduced the dispersion module. It reproduces the inconsistencies created by the analog components across various voice parameters such as pitch, pulse width, filters cutoff and resonance, envelope times and many others. You can use various presets to hear the differences between each voicing dispersion. More than that, in the hidden tab, there are individual trimmers that you can use to further tailor the sound. To hear how this feature can impact the sound, let's use the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator cycles through the voices instead of reassigning them, which can be helpful to compare each voice behavior. Now let's listen to this bass sound and manipulate the pitch and pulse width dispersion trimmers. As you can hear, the dispersion is easily noticeable, making it sound a bit more natural, organic and tonally interesting. You can also experiment with the cutoff and resonance, along with the envelope and mod trimmers. For that to happen, program a pad with long envelope times opening the filter, turn up the resonance and pan spread. Now hear how the dispersion makes each voice drift in terms of timbre and time across the stereo field. Here we go. The voice assign section allows you to define the behavior of the Dupe 8V voices. Here you can decide if the instrument is working in mono mode, as well as enable the unison that stacks up multiple voices on one key, producing a wide and beefy sound. Once enabled, the bottom toolbar combo box appears, letting you choose the unison mode. The classic splits the eight voices among the number of keys pressed and can be used to play polyphonically. Selecting one of the numbers 228 sets the unison to monophonic, 
In this mode, the number determines how many voices are assigned to a key pressed. As well as use two various polyphonic modes. In the first one, the release of the voice will overlap with a new incoming note. while in the second, the release of the voice will be choked by the new incoming note. To further investigate the voices settings, make sure to explore the new sidebar. You can also spice up your notes and melodies by introducing the pan spread and portamento. Pan spread spreads the active voices across the stereo field, making the sound feel wider, while portamento, also called glide, introduces a short to long smooth pitch transition time between each new note played. The lower right corner area brings us Bender and Mod Wheel, two performance controls. You can also use the Bender to either affect VCO's pitch, or the VCF frequency parameter. In each of those parameters, the modulation amount faders will define how much modulation is applied. LFO mod wheel, on the other hand, controls the front panel LFO modulation amounts, giving you quick access to modulate the VCO or VCF with the LFO one. Unfolding the Advanced tab, we enter the Advanced panel, which brings a lot of new features and revamped design. It consists of the Modulations, Sequencer, Keyboard, and Effects section. Let's start with the Modulation. Here we encounter two additional Advanced LFOs, which are identical in their structure. They allow you to target two destination parameters and have some really unique controls dedicated to the shaping process of the output waveform signal. Let's target the VCF cutoff to explore all of its potential. Now we'll use the saw waveform and enable the poly mode, which means that the LFO will affect each voice independently, like this. Now to go really beyond the norm, let's start to shape our waveform. First, we can use the phase control to adjust the LFO's phase. Then there's a new warp function, which applies distortion to the waveform phase, allowing to bend and shape the waveform, giving us interesting sonic results. We can also introduce the fade in time, making the LFO affect the VCF with a slight delay. Lastly, it might be a good idea to change the LFO cycling to single. This will make the LFO perform just one cycle, affecting the targeted parameter not all the time, but just once, acting similarly to an envelope. The remaining options to explore consists of the unipole button, which changes the LFO from bipolar to unipolar, and the retrig, which defines if the LFO cycle is retriggered when you press a key or runs freely. Another major addition is the modulation mixer. Here, all of the Jupaid V modulation modules and sources can merge to produce new signals, allowing for even deeper sound sculpting capabilities. To start using it, simply choose two mixer sources from the unfolding list, such as LFO2 and LFO3. Then you can define how these two will mix with each other by unfolding the Mod Mixer Type tab. Then you can choose if the signals will be multiplied, summed, differentiated, divided, crossfaded, or lag. <laughs> On 
top of that, you can also define how much those two sources will mix with each other by increasing the mod mixer amount. The visualizer will always show you what is happening to the mixed waveforms. Finally, once your modulation mix is done, you can target up to three destinations. Let's go for the VCF again. As you can hear, this creative device can help you to sculpt and produce new modulations that were not possible to be made with a standard modulator. When combined, they produce a very unique modulation signal. This is just one way of doing it, but the options here are pretty much limitless. Make sure to explore this tool and come up with your own personal modulation sources. Another unique part of the advanced panel is the sequencer tab. Here you can use the sequencers dedicated to notes and modulations. The note sequencer works by offsetting the notes played on the keyboard or received from a MIDI clip. The offset values are defined per step. Their value can be seen below each step. There you can also enable or disable tricks per step to introduce rests and silence. More than that, accents and glides can be introduced per step. The accent controls are expanded in the section on the right of the sequencer grid. Accent lets you apply an additional envelope to the filter per step. It has a dedicated control for its decay and its envelope amount. Glide, on the other hand, applies some portamento per step. Its time can be controlled from the glide knob. Both features let you introduce further groove and movement into your patterns. To make sure you're always in tune, the note sequencer provides 14 different scales, plus the custom one for your own personal taste. In this area, you can also define the scale's root note, as well as set the sequencer octave range, plus define how it's rooted to VCO1 and 2. Finally, use the rate control to set the pattern's tempo and increase the swing value to provide more groove. You can also define the playback direction. The options are forward, backward, back and forth, and random. On top of that, there's also a randomizer that will generate random patterns. To make one, simply increase its amount with your mouse. The small amount will modify the pattern slightly, while the higher values will change it completely. It's a good idea to use it in combination with your personal scale to make sure you're always hitting the right notes. To give you even more modulation capabilities, Dupe8V brings the mod sequencer. This one can affect up to three parameters and will allow you to set individual modulation values per step. This lets you create sequenced step-based modulations, which in opposition to the wilder nature of the modulations tab, can be used for other purposes. For example, to modulate the accent parameters per step. More than that, you can multiply the mod sequencer rate to speed up or slow down the modulation. By the way, the playback direction features and random pattern generator control works in the sequencer too. The keyboard tab is dedicated for the keyboard modulation controls. This section is here to enhance the keyboard expressivity of the instrument. Here you can connect velocity, aftertouch, mod wheel and keyboard tracking to almost any parameter of the instrument and apply positive or negative modulation values. 
More than that, you can also shape the curves within each segment, making the interaction between the instrument even more organic. Last in the order and in the signal chain are the effects. These consist of three bus effects that you can route to either run in parallel or in series. There are 11 available spatial, dynamic and modulation effects. Each one provides a lot of controls and one dry wet fader to control the mix ratio. These sound sweet and provide lots of diversity, allowing you to adjust your final sound and make it song ready. Their definitive strength is that they are also available as modulation sources. You can easily target the dry wet fader as well as the delays time, chorus, feedback and reverb decay parameters. All right, that's it for this tutorial. The Jupe 8V shines with unique features and a flexible sound engine that will make it fit in the mix like none other. Make sure to give it a try and test it for yourself. Thanks for watching and subscribe to our channel to see more videos. See you soon.